Kept you waiting, huh? Well, I did say I was going to take a little break from doing these stats videos, but uh, it's been three months now. So yeah, apologies for the delay. I've been quite busy making this uh, little web app for um, helping people choose tariffs. So uh, more news on that, hopefully very soon. It's uh, going really well. Um, but yeah, I um, had a great summer. So uh, let's show you all of the statistics. But if you want a um, rundown of the full system, go check out the description. I've got um, the full description there and some videos that uh, explain all of the various components. But uh, with all that out of the way, let's get on with it. So let's start with our original Give Energy system. This is our east-west split array of about 6.8 kilowatt peak. And uh, you can see that in August we generated 680 kilowatt hours, which once again for the sixth month running is well above what we would normally expect um, given the uh, the expected um, estimated generation from PVGIS, which is this blue shaded area, and you can see that it is the best August that we've had in the three years since we've had the uh, the system installed. So, the last two years were around about the 630 mark, and now we're up at 680. So, that's really good. Um, in July, way above um, what we would expect, um, close to the plus one standard deviation line of 846 kilowatt hours which is substantially more than the previous two years. And in June, uh, yeah, once again, in, uh, way, way, way higher than the, uh, than the plus one standard deviation line there, up at 933.9 kilowatt hours. Um, to, in fact, it, that is the maximum that we've um, ever generated. May prior, prior was only just a little bit less than that. So uh, yeah, an exceptionally um, uh, good set of months. So if we add in the south arrays, so the, these are the two new south arrays that we added in March um, in order to do a, uh, an experiment on um, different types of inverter. So I've got a whole playlist about this, um, this inverter experiment, so go check that out. Um, but yeah, you can see again, um, for the last three months, we are above what we would expect um, every single month. So um, uh, the two different sub arrays, we've got the, the Fox ESS, um, inverter and then a uh, with three panels of uh, 460 watts each and then three panels of 460 watts connected to Enphase microinverters um, and go out, go check out the uh, the specific videos about that if you want all of the de details on that but yeah you can see that both arrays um, above the um, expected the um, the Fox ESS just about on the expected level for July but otherwise every other month um, for both systems they were um, above what you would expect. And um, as usual, the end phase system was about 5% more in each month. I'm going to do a full breakdown of the inverter experiment um, in a separate video. But yeah, about 5% extra for the uh, for the microinverters over the um, string inverter. But uh, because these two new arrays were very kindly installed at cost by um, my sponsor, um, I'll just leave a little sponsorship message here. This string versus microinverter experiment is being supported by Green Team One, the solar installers who put the new system in place for me. If you're in the Gloucestershire or surrounding counties and would like a solar or battery system, give these guys a ring or check out their website linked in the description and let them know that I sent you. Welcome back. So if we combine all of those three arrays together, this is the chart we get. Um, so obviously last year was just the Give Energy system and uh, that shows um, what we generated uh, compared to what we would expect to generate. And then if we add the two new arrays on, this is what we get for this year. So uh, the two new arrays were installed right at the end of February. So we, we do have a full month's worth from March onwards. Um, and as you can see, the summer has been very, very good. Um, all the way from March onwards, we, we've massively breached what we would expect to generate. And you can see we're actually now on for five consecutive months of more than one megawatt hour. Uh, so yeah, the first megawatt hour month was back in April and it's been more than a megawatt hour ever since. And we've only just uh, breached the one megawatt hour uh, level uh, for August. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, with the summer as it's gone. Um, this is, uh, I don't suppose we're gonna experience this every year. Um, in actual fact, I'd rather there was a little bit more rain, honestly, um, uh, on a typical year. Our, our garden is looking dreadfully dry, but uh, uh, can't really complain about the level of solar generation. And if we look at how each of those three arrays has performed in terms of the number of kilowatt hours generated per 
kilowatt peak of, of each array, you can see the give energy array obviously um, going up and down through the uh, winter and summer cycle and peaked at 136.5 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak, which actually for June was above the level of the uh, the other two arrays, um, which were around about the 120 to 130 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. Now, what I would expect actually is for the south arrays to have a somewhat flatter profile, so they won't dip quite as low in the winter. Um, and they are, well, roughly the same sort of level in the summer, but you can see I think they're going to start to be higher than the uh, east-west array uh, from now on and through through the winter. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to see that they got very, very close um, during the peak of the summer, and I think that's because uh, during the height of summer, our roof, our south roof, is very, very steep. It's it's at least 45 degrees pitch, which means um, in the in the very height in in June, the sun is actually above the um, the sort of perpendicular angle um, facing the the, the panels. Um, so that actually will pull down the uh, the number of uh, uh, kilowatt hours somewhat uh, compared to what you would expect if the um, panels were a little bit uh, more tilted upwards. For for example, if if, my, if our roof was more like 35 degrees we would see probably a little bit higher um, kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak of, from those south arrays in the height of summer, but at the expense of um, the uh, generation dropping more during the winter. So it'll be interesting to see for our particular array, which is very steep, we should see a somewhat flatter profile, which, uh, which will be interesting to see um, if that uh, actually plays out in practice. Um, and of course, um, with an east-west array, you get generation for more of the day because when the sun is um, is very very high in the sky it uh, will fall on both of those arrays but you'll also see more of that generation in the morning and in the evening which you don't get with the south array which uh, therefore gives you a little bit more generation from that, that east west split um, in the summer which uh, which i always think is really interesting and in fact if you see um for example go and go and check out upside down forks videos for his sort of northwest array you'll see that he gets a very wide um distribution of generation throughout uh, throughout the summer because obviously it's catching that uh, that summer sun more effectively than you would otherwise expect so yeah it's fascinating to see the different orientations having uh, different generation profiles right so what did we do with all of that lovely solar generation well we uh, used a fair bit of it um, but obviously a good chunk of it got exported i'll come to that in a little bit but of what we did use um, this is the uh, the chart showing how that breaks down into different categories uh, so yeah, let's work from the top to the bottom. Um, you can see here we've got this uh, yellow block. These yellow blocks here are the air-to-air -air heat pump system. So that's what we use obviously in the winter for our heating. But these uh, blocks of yellow here are due to the very warm uh, periods we've had during the summer, which has meant that we've made much better use of our air-to-air -air heat pump system as air conditioning this summer than we did last summer. As you can see, quite a, a low amount of uh, kilowatt hours last summer um, compared to um, this summer. So uh, yeah, 42.6 in June, 82.9 in, in uh, July and 36.2 in August so far. I don't suppose we're going to be using it much more from uh, from here on out for cooling. I suspect by the time we get to October we'll, we may well start using our uh, air to air heat pump system for heating. Um, as you can see last year this is what happened. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I think our uh, days of uh, air conditioning are probably over for the summer now. Um, but yeah, the hot water is doing well. Um, uh, you may have seen my Mixergy full year stats video um, recently. And you can see because we've obviously now had the Mixergy IHP, the integrated heat pump cylinder for a full year. And uh, our hot water usage has been uh, very low, which is good. So, you know, around about 30 kilowatt hours per month over the summer. And the EV, we've actually been using the EV quite a lot more um, than we did last year uh, around about the same time. You can see that uh, uh, in August 140, uh, June was 175, only about 38.5 in July for some reason, not really sure why that was. Um, back in May it was 173, etc. Whereas uh, the previous year, you know, it was closer to, well, between 50 and 120. Um, yeah, we seem to be using it a little bit more, which um, maybe that's because, I don't know, maybe the uh, the Zoe that we have now is a little bit more practical for longer trips, so we're using it a bit more for that. Um, that might be the case. Um, maybe it, it does certainly feels like we've been using it a bit more, so that's good. Uh, it means that we can basically get rid of the, uh, the petrol car, which I'll be doing uh, soon, uh, now that Kat no longer needs to do her commute because she's She's uh, handed in her notice and is now uh, working for herself uh, full time. So yeah, she's super pleased about that, but it does mean that we no longer need two cars. So we can uh, get rid of the petrol car 
and um, yeah, that's uh, that's working really well. Uh, and obviously everything else that's uh, left behind is what I call remainder here. Uh, now you may, if you uh, are super observant, if you compare to the last stats video I did back uh, at the start of June, um, that uh, the um, these numbers are a little bit different to what I showed in that video. That's because I've had to, uh, I've gone back and I've reassessed how I do the calculation because of the addition of the new south arrays, uh, completely messing up the data in the Give Energy app. I've had to sort of recreate it. Um, the uh, well, in particular, the, the the consumption values because the Give Energy app, uh, app the um, the system can't see that new generation. It sees it as negative consumption. Uh, I've uh, talked a little bit about, about that previously, but it's meant that it's not been the easiest to uh, get a, a good idea of what the data is supposed to be for the consumption. And then I realised that I was overcomplicating it, and I and um, actually there's a there's a there's a universal truth uh, that uh, makes it a lot simpler to do this calculation, and that is that obviously anything that we pull into the house in terms of energy has got to be matched by the amount that gets consumed by the house or exported back out. So what I mean by that is conservation of energy, um, which some of you may be familiar with, the concept that you can't create or destroy energy. If we import energy and we generate energy, those two things combined have got to e exactly equal the amount that we consume plus the amount that we export. In other words, if I know exactly how much we're importing and exactly how much we're exporting, which I do because the Octopus Energy app tells me exactly that. And if I know how much I'm generating, which I also do because I've got the, at least I think the Give Energy app is accurate for that part of it at least. And I can add that together with the, the generation from the South Arrays, which I measure independently. Then the only thing that I don't know then is the consumption, which is the thing that Give Energy is struggling to give me accurate answers on. Well, I can work it out from those other three things. So therefore, that's what I've done. That has simplified the calculation. And I now believe that these uh, numbers since March are now more accurate than they were in my previous stats videos. So if you go back and watch those old stats videos, you'll see that the numbers from March onwards um, are slightly different now compared to what they were. And I think these new numbers are, are a little bit more accurate. So uh, this is what I think is, uh, is the case now. So uh, hopefully from now on, um, the numbers will be a little bit better, a little bit more reliable. Um, but uh, in uh, addition to that, I will hopefully be finally addressing this issue of the Give Energy at, uh, system not being able to see the new arrays. Uh, with the help of Green Team One, they're gonna come back and they're gonna help me fit some uh, extra monitoring that will pass the information from those two new arrays to the Give Energy inverter which will then hopefully mean that we can properly monitor all of the uh, flows of energy into and out of that system, which will give me more reliable data. That's the plan anyway. Hopefully I'll have more on that in a future video. And here's a new chart I'm introducing, and it's the rolling an annual net consumption. And what I mean by that is basically everything we consume uh, minus everything that we generate. And because we've had the new um, South Arrays added since March, you can see that um, we were roughly at a, a, a net consumption of about 3,000 kilowatt hours um, each year. So we were generating 3,000 kilowatt hours less than we were consuming. But since we the addition of those new South Arrays, you can see that the, uh, the rolling net consumption has been on a steady decline. And we're now very close to uh, having a net zero uh, rolling net consumption, um, which I would hope to reach, hopefully, let's see, what does this look like? It might sort of plateau out. It's gonna be very, very close to zero, um, which is which was the entire aim of me adding these, uh, these new um, South ar uh, arrays. I was hoping that I would be able to generate the same, roughly the same amount per year as, as we were consuming. So yeah, that look, does look like that's going to be the case um, uh, as we get through into winter and we get more of the uh, the full year. So by the time we get to next March, we'll have had a full year, including the uh, the two new South Arrays. And I would hope that we will uh, be on for a, a either a net zero or a, a negative net consumption. Uh, so uh, yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be really exciting to see. Hopefully I'll have more on that later. And finally, the exceptional summer has resulted in some exceptional savings. And you can see the last three months we've been saving well north of £200. The bill has been consistently negative at uh, more than minus £120 every month um, over the last three months. Um, and when you combine that with the uh, the negative bills from March, April and May, the uh, the total of all these red 
um, bills here is actually minus 685 pounds and 87 pence so we have earned uh, nearly 700 pounds over the last six months and um, due to the uh, exceptional um, solar generation and the fact that we've had these extra um, panels added so uh, yeah that's um that's pretty good isn't it and uh, once again if we um uh, show you the the rolling annual bill so very similar to the uh, the rolling net consumption that, that i showed previously it's basically the same thing except because we're able to import energy very cheaply overnight using the intelligent go tariff and then export at uh, 15 pence so importing at 7 exporting at 15 um, that means that in fact our bill is um, actually negative now um, so despite the fact that we're not quite our uh, net zero in terms of energy we are uh, net negative for the bill and it's very close to uh, minus 200 pounds now uh, for the whole year um, including uh, well the last 12 months but it looks very much like this is uh, not slowing down anytime soon I suppose um, you know the the, uh, the monthly bill for September is not going to be um, whatever this is. What's that? Minus £124. I'm not expecting it to be um, uh, anywhere close to that. It's probably going to get start to come back towards this zero mark here for the winter and then uh, obviously go um, above the line here for, for when we start using our heating a little bit more. But this should plateau out. I estimate it's going to be somewhere in the region of May, between three and £400 pounds, um, negative each year uh, from, uh, from this point onwards. So yeah, that's really good. And I fully expect I'm going to get comments along the lines of, well, how much did you spend to get those sorts of levels of savings? And I will uh, answer that by saying, go check out the videos in the description. I've got um, all of the uh, the details of, of everything that we've done to the house, all of the um, solar arrays and everything else. So go and check those out. All of the details are in there. Um, but that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. It's been a great summer. I hope you've all had a good summer as well. And um, let's hope that the uh, the winter isn't too unkind. And uh, I'll see you probably in another couple of months. Um, maybe I'll do these every quarter. It seems about right. Um, but uh, with any luck before then, I will have much more news about the uh, the tariff tool that I'm building. Very, very, very close to being ready. I'm super excited by it. I think it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, let you know about that when that's ready to go. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon.